Hello and welcome to the Aquarium's Dilemmas podcast. I'm your host, Science Gal Aquatics. I'm Carrie, and this is my co-host. Jesse. Welcome. Episode 6, Aquarium Myths. Yes. We're a little out of order this week. We were going to talk about something else, but I thought this would be an interesting kind of fun topic to talk about some of my mistakes and myths that I've believed in in the past and why I thought they were true for so long and now I don't necessarily think they're true anymore. So I thought it would be an interesting topic to talk about. Well, these myths that we're talking about, where do they kind of originate from? Mm -hmm. I got most of my advice when I first started fish keeping when I was a kid from my dad and my local fish store is where I got probably 95% of my know-how when it came to fish keeping so I just kind of followed their lead but there is a lot of things that I would have argued were true to my last breath that now I just and there's an embarrassing amount of them so we probably won't even come close to covering them all today we'll probably just cover one or two but there's a long list of just fresh I deal with fresh water so just the fresh water mist out there that yeah, I don't know necessarily like could pinpoint in this date, time, and year where they came up, but I think that there's enough of whatever myth you're talking about that's true, just enough that it does kind of catch on, but it's not true in every single situation. Well, and I think in today's world, some of these myths can be eliminated just due to the vast social media and mm -hmm. the internet of everything's at the reach of your fingertips now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more we can talk about it and share it, and hopefully we can either tell you why we believe in it, and maybe you come along and be like, yeah, that is true, maybe I shouldn't do that. That Hopefully that helps, but I think the more we kind of learn from each other and share the information that is true and not true, it just will help. A lot of fish keepers out there so hopefully you can learn from what I shouldn't have done in the past <laughs> the, the misconception <laughs> yes and I told Jesse I was like here's a list of things that I probably should have learned not to do a lot earlier in my fish keeping career so he could pick so what do you want to talk about first I will go with the one that <laughs> we're even guilty of doing yes well i'm guilty a, of all of them a but. <laughs> fish will only grow to the size of its aquarium or yes. the one inch per one gallon mm -hmm. they kind of go hand in hand but there's there are two separate myths the your the, i think goldfish really from my personal experience from what i have seen around me the most i think goldfish are really the fish that's the most harmed by this they will only grow to the size of your tank but that's not true and if your goldfish is on the smaller size and a 10 gallon it's probably sick <laughs> and it's that not it shouldn't be that size there's a reason and it's not the size of the well i guess it is the size of the tank because the it, it needs more room. A goldfish just needs more room. It's not going to stop growing because it knows it's in a 10-gallon tank. So if it is a little smaller, it's because it's gotten stunted or sick or maybe the water conditions weren't what it needed. It's not because it just was like, oh, I should stop growing now. Well, that's what's ludicrous to me about this myth mm -hmm. is if... And it's gene specific because every fish will grow to a different size. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't just put a shark, a great white shark <laughs> or a whale in a 75 gallon tank and think, mm -hmm. okay, it's not going to Well, out more realistic example, probably our silver arowana it's, upstairs. Yeah, it's not going to outgrow this tank. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of parameters around mm -hmm. there. You could starve it to death, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to do that. But I know growing up, I, I mean, I did not 
treat my I thought I was treating my goldfish really well I had numerous goldfish in my life and every time I thought I was doing the absolute best job but I was not I was heating their tank I was putting way too many and I had a 30 gallon tank at the time and yeah they were swimming around and they were okay but they were not living their best life by any means and I just I I was guilty. I thought that they would kind of match their environment. They would grow into whatever they thought that would work best. And then they would kind of slow down growing and then that would be okay. And that is not at all true. And if I still believe that and I put that silver wana up, silver air wana in a 20 gallon long just because it fits, it can't move, it can't do anything. So you've got to know what what you're keeping if you're going to keep a monster fish you can't expect it to live a healthy life in a small tank and if you get it when it's small and you're told like I was that oh this over air one can live in a 20 gallon tank for a really long time and it'll grow slowly and you'll have time to upgrade that's not true either you've got to know how fast your fish will grow because some of those fish and grow I think, fast <laughs> I think that's a very very good point There is a lot of misinformation from the pet stores to the consumer Mm -hmm. just because either they're busy, they have other things Mm -hmm. they have to do, another customer to check out. Yes, and I think that's true, but I don't think even they all the time, they're not going to go in there and just give you bad information on purpose. I'm sure there there might be someone out there that's going to sell you a common pleco knowing you're going to put it in a bad environment, it's going to pass away, and you're going to come in and buy another one. But I think a lot of the people out there that's giving advice that's wrong or right is still giving it to you to like the best of their ability. They still think it's true. So if you go to the pet store and they tell you, oh, you have a 10 gallon tank you can put i know from when i was a kid i i there's another myth that we were going to talk about that's one inch per gallon of water but when i was a kid i took it as one fish per gallon of water but i was dealing with smaller fish so i would go in and i would have a 10 gallon tank so i would no matter what buy 10 guppies and that's what i wanted to start off my tank and that's not necessarily true either. So, well, it's not true. I mean, with smaller fish, yes, you can get by with more fish in a tank if you have the proper filtration. Yep. And but you can't just say, I have a 20-gallon tank. I can put a 20-inch fish in there or 20 go. It just depends if your tanks can't. It's based on your filtration, too. So if you have more filtration, you can put more guppies in there. But if you don't have enough filtration to balance all that waste and get it just right, then you shouldn't start with that Well, going back just to the size aspect, Mm -hmm. I got a 20 long. I can't put 20 Oscars in it. No. (laughs) Those 20 Oscars, there wouldn't even be any water left. They'd be so big that all the water would go out of it. Yeah, so... Yeah, there's just a lot of things that I've believed in in the years that I just would argue if someone was willing to argue with me that, yeah, that you can. That's how you should do it. And it's just not the case. And I'm just hoping. <laughs> well, it's it's species-specific, uh-huh. gene-specific. You need to have a trusted person as a beginner at the fish store that you Mm -hmm. go to Mm -hmm. and hope for not bad information Mm -hmm. or misinformation you need to now there's you can have information at your fingertips so much easier just in the time span from now to when i was a kid that you still have to be a little proactive yourself and be like okay this is what i have available this is what i can afford to get tank wise what can i put in there and how big are they gonna get Or how much waste are they going to produce? Like, there's a lot of different factors than just, I have a 20-gallon, and this is, I have 20 fish to put in there. Well, and again, back to the original story Uh of the arowana. You brought it home, and you were told that, and it was little at the time i will give them in their defense they did say this was going to be a larger fish and you said and they said it would have to be upgraded Mm -hmm. but i had a lot of time to do so 
Not necessarily. To the no. beginner fish keeper uh-huh. or, e- did- or even to the experienced fish keeper. Mm-hmm. A six-month time span just to upgrade one fish, one fish, mm-hmm. is not very long. No, and we fed the arowana well, so it grew quite, quite fast. But the experience of keeping a silver arowana and the experience of keeping a guppy tank is just a different experience. The upkeep's different, the feeding's different, the setup's different, like everything about it's different. And you need to know what your what your fish needs in the correct environment so they can thrive. Yes, were my goldfish living in a 30-gallon heated tank with four or five of them at the time? They were living, but they were not in the conditions that was set up for them to thrive. Moving the, the goldfish that I have had left now, granted those ones I had all through my 20s, and they were like, I think, 18 years old, but... The ones that I have now, I move them outside to the koi pond, and it's a larger water column or water volume. It's definitely a colder temperature all year round, and those goldfish are huge <laughs> compared to the goldfish that were inside. And yes, they were living, they were swimming, and they were interacting with me, but because I was making this mistake of overstocking in a tank too small and heated, I was creating them not they just weren't gonna grow to what they could possibly grow to yes and it wasn't because they knew to stop growing because i they were in a 30 like okay 30 gallon tank this is what i i'm gonna stop growing now no it was what i was the environment i was creating that was causing them to stay small and probably they weren't they were swimming but they weren't swimming like with an like an energy to them they were a little you could tell that they just and every once in a while I would lose one over the years to various circumstances and I it was I just chalked it up to they were getting old and passing away but again it was I didn't do my job as a fish keeper to research what they needed to live to grow to their fullest potential I thought I knew it all, and I was stuck in a box because I believed in a myth that I didn't take any time out to even know if it was true or not. I just believed it because I was told it, and enough people told me that that I believed it even more. And it was my lack of research and being a proper fish keeper, knowing what I had. And I've lost a lot of fish over the years just because of various mistakes that i just didn't know were mistakes at the time and looking back i'm like oh my gosh (laughs) various myths that you believed Mm -hmm. that in reality were not correct Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and with my guppies like with i kind of took it as the one fish per gallon because i kept guppies so i could get by with that it's not necessarily wrong you can you can start a tank with 10 guppies and uh, there's there's no problem with that but you shouldn't go into the fish store with the mindset i have a 10 gallon i'm going to get 10 guppies you should look at it as i have this much filtration they have this much bio waste i can support like maybe get a good handful and build up and then i'm going to have bite babies and fry and all this stuff and generations to come so i'm going to have plants and kind of build it up slowly than just having the mindset this is what i have and this is i'm going to get a, i have a 20 long so i'm going to get 20 guppies or 20 mollies like you just shouldn't go into it with that mindset i agree That doesn't mean it doesn't work. It works. You just need to think about it in a different point of view. And you'll set yourself up for Well, and so back to the single fish, a beginner, you're bombarded at the local pet store or the Mm -hmm. big box store. This is what you you bought all this in one kit. This is the way it is, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. And it's a generic baseline mm-hmm. that I believe is a hundred percent wrong. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. The Arowana, for example, he had a great, wonderful time in his very first tank. Yeah, it worked great, but he was teeny tiny. <laughs> and it only lasted about six months. It didn't even last that long. Because when I first bought that silver arowana, it was maybe four inches, five inches. And he or she came with a black feather fin knife fish. And they were both tiny in a 10-gallon. And they had plenty of room to swim and get along. And I think it was only like a few weeks later that we went ahead and moved them into a 20 long and they were in there for a little while i can't remember the specifics if it was a month or two but i know within probably the general six months they were at least in that because we went from a 10 to a 20 long to a 55 and then we got that 180 and now we're searching for an even larger tank because he's growing even more and i knew that he would get large but again i didn't take enough time to realize how fast and granted i'm in the position and you help me and we have the rooms in the tank and the area to, so we could do that easily but just know that if you're going to get a monster fish or a monster pleco or whatever it is we had a largemouth bass at the time just know that just because the bass is I don't know eight inches <laughs> that you should put it in a a 20 long like the, you just have to know that those type of fish are going to get large extremely quick and so you should have I almost wish I would have started with a 55 and just went to a 180 because it's a lot of stress on me from stressing out on how to upgrade and move and a lot of stress on the fish just constantly moving them into a bigger tank so if you set yourself up knowing, okay, this fish is going to get monstrous, I'm going to, I need to set up this tank now. I think, and I mean, there's always certain fish that may, that will work better if you, if you start, I've heard, I haven't experienced having Oscars and this could be another myth that I was told that I believe in now. That's not even true. I don't know. <laughs> but if you get them small, I, I've been told that certain fish might grow up and you might have better luck grow starting them as they're smaller in a 10 gallon or 20 long and when they get like we did with the air one gradually go up but that's again you got to know what fish are keeping they're kind of know what their personalities are like and even with that you can get a cranky fish and a happy fish i mean my bet is some of them are cranky and some of them are happy <laughs> and we have a cranky hungry arowana yeah he's always cranky and hopefully that made sense Hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> but, yeah, there's tons of... And I know that another big myth that I, I believed in for a long time. And and when I say I believed in these myths a long time, I started keeping fish when I was a little bitty kid. Like, I don't really have a memory without some kind of fish tank because my dad always had them. But I would have argued with you that a smaller tank is easier to care for till I was absolutely blue in the face and mad if you didn't believe. I, I would have, but I don't even know how to put into words to tell you that these larger tanks that I keep, and when I say larger tanks for me, that's a 55 gallon, my 75 gallon, and my 180 are far easier to take care of than any five gallon tank that I have ever owned I just feel like for me personally that was something that I should have let go a long time ago <laughs> and that one is another one uh -huh. the same as the fish will only grow to the size of the aquarium mm -hmm. that's like buying a St. Bernard puppy and thinking it's only going to get to 25 pounds yeah the, to me that's ludicrous mm -hmm. and with the tank the small tanks it's almost the same knowing what i know now water volume makes a huge difference mm -hmm. the quantity of water allows you to not have sudden swings in your water parameters as 
much as it will affect if you only have 10 gallons of water versus you have 55 gallons of water. Mm-hmm. Yes. And for many different factors, from the amount of substrate and biological filtration you can have in there, in surface area, water and substrate wise mm-hmm. versus even the amount of fish you can have way more fish in a 55 and still have less bio load than having two fish in a 10 just because mm-hmm. of water volume yeah i just i wish <laughs> words i just i wish i had the words to express my express myself when I had this epiphany that I sit back and I got the 55 gallons first those that was my first larger tank and after some time went through I just did not have now I still have algae but it's nowhere near like the five gallons the temperature swings the pH swings like it does take longer because of there's more water volume to get established and balanced in the beginning but once once it it's there and everything's good and it's just words can't describe how much easier they are especially now that I have I've discovered plants so my 55 gallon my 75 gallon I would like to plant the 180 but with the fish I have in there we've tried but it just doesn't work <laughs> The maintenance, because of the plants also helping, if the filter for some reason gets clogged and we don't get right to it, I don't panic like the smaller tanks. Especially, be- like, when my 10-gallon tanks, before I had plants, took, it just seems like I had problems after problems after problems with them, and I never really knew why. And I just feel like those drastic swings, and it's completely possible, I mean... I don't want to feel like I'm being dramatic, like it's the hardest thing ever. It's completely possible. And some of my 10-gallon and 5-gallon tanks I'm really proud of. But I just feel like that stress of that what's going on and my fish sometimes are gasping when I'm first setting, like when it's first getting established, if I would sometimes put guppies in it way too fast. And they would, until I would get everything just right every once in a while i'd have like a fish gasping at the surface or something like that but i just now that i have the water the bigger tanks with the larger amount of water volume and i just like i said i can't find the words and it was a huge epiphany but they're just so much easier you just (laughs) i recommend them every time if you can have the time space to find one and get it set up and Get it established with some live plants. Those larger tanks are just, they're so enjoyable. And I was so adamant about, I just wanted five tens and that's it. That's all I wanted. That's all I liked. And I'm so glad that my mind opened up and I was like, wow, this is great. (laughs) Well, I think for the beginner, like me, Mm -hmm. I believe in my mind, a 20 is probably the way to start out. Not a 10, a 20. Yeah, the 20 longs, I will have to say, I don't know, there's just a jump between that 10 and 20 long that I feel like it is a little bit easier. You have the you have the added water. Mm-hmm. You have a little bit more room for error as far as cycling, ammonia, all the spikes, the changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse's got a tickle in his throat. I do. I have a huge tickle. <laughs> I was just, I, again, I'm not the most eloquent person, and trying to explain myself on my own podcast sometimes can be a little difficult. So in time, I'll get there. But just there's there's something about those five-gallon tanks and those 10-gallon tanks that sometimes in the beginning, if you don't know how to properly, if you don't know the reasons why you're cycling, especially like I did in the beginning, I would just set a tank up and get my fish and put it in there, and I had no idea why I was having problems. And 
even with knowing a little bit more now and taking the time and knowing about the nitrogen cycle and knowing maybe where I could get some hiccups, even with that, I still feel like the larger tanks are just easier to, once they get going, to stay consistent in my levels. I don't test all the time my water, but I just, even just watching my fish, you get to know your tank. Like, I will, if something's up and I notice something's up, I'll test my water now. In the beginning is usually when I get them going, when I test it more. But I just don't have those drastic swings as I did with the 10. But I do like, I will agree with you. I think there's something about a 20 long that you, even with that jump between a 10 gallon and a 20 long, that you can kind of get away from a little bit of those challenges too. I just feel like it's just a little bit easier adding just more and more, more and more waters, the less and less problems you'll have. <laughs> well, me being the, the newbie, uh-huh. and I'm going to speak from anyone that is coming into the hobby, mm-hmm. doing it for themselves or for their children, however it may be, and everything that's bombarded at you. If you're looking at price points and everything else, the difference between doing a 10 and doing a 20, mm-hmm. you are worth the little bit more money to go ahead with the 20. Mm-hmm. It allows you more flexibility in fish species. Mm-hmm. Allows you more flexibility in the cycling process as mm-hmm. far as it, even I do not a hundred percent equivocally know the water cycle. Mm-hmm. I can explain it, I can go through all of it, and we will in upcoming dilemmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, that way you just ha you take one more little error factor out. Mm-hmm. So, if you do get a little miscommunication of, yes, this fish will be fine in your tank in a in a tin, and you get it, and it starts really growing, mm-hmm. you have a little bit more time and a little bit more room to work mm-hmm. with, knowing, okay, I have a 20 instead of a 10. Mm-hmm. Again, both things work coinciding together Mm -hmm. to see how they can happen yes so kind of wrapping up kind of we'll go over these three myths and we'll definitely get back to this topic again in an upcoming episode again because there's so many that i believed in for so long but yeah definitely go into the fish store with a different mindset than just knowing that i have this many gallon tank so i'm gonna get this many fish kind of don't go into it with that kind of kind of know the reason why you can have this many fish i have good filtration it's been established i've tested my water everything's balanced and good to go and i have plants so i have a planted 20 long maybe start off with five guppies and have plenty of babies and fry and kind of grow them up that way just because you have a 10 gallon or 20 gallon or a 55 gallon tank don't just buy 55 fish for your 55 gallon tank don't do that and just know that the fish are not going to stop growing just because they have my poor goldfish just didn't get the memo that they needed to stop growing at the 30 gallon. It was because of my mistakes that made them smaller. So know that the fish just, they can easily outgrow a tank and do that very quickly. So Yeah, the yes. arowana sent us the memo back. Yeah, like, uh, get on it. Yeah. And I, that's another thing. I just assumed that it was going to be really easy to get a large tank. I just figured, honestly that I go to the fish store and buy every other size tank. So why can't I go to the fish store and make an order? I need a large tank and I need it delivered. This, the stores I have around here don't work that way. <laughs> so it took some time and we had to find one that was used and resilicone it. So just definitely if you want whatever fish you want, just take the time and know how it's going to grow, what it needs to thrive 
and I really like goldfish. I really enjoy watching them swim, and I really regret not taking care of them properly, but again, I can't beat myself up because I was, I did think, honestly, that I was doing the right thing, but now moving forward, I can learn from my mistakes and go for the correct way, so, yeah. And capping it up on my end, mm -hmm. from the beginner, speaking to all the beginners out there, thinking about getting another aquarium or just starting in, 20 long, best bang for your buck, a mm -hmm. little bit more water volume, and it's going to, when you do your research on the fish that you would like to stock in that tank, it's going to open up a little bit more room for you to pick. You may not be able mm -hmm. to pick as many fish in for that 20 long. If you're wanting something towards the cichlid variety or a bigger type fish, or if you're wanting to stay to the small side with the guppies and the neon tetra mm -hmm. and the littler fish, the nano fish, mm -hmm. so to speak, then you'll be able to get way more than that, mm -hmm. depending on your substrate, your plants, etc. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have a lot more room once your tank is cycled, the variables will be a lot less. Your ammonia spikes, your nitrates, your mm -hmm. nitrites. We'll go all into that in many, many more podcasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so please continue to download and follow us. And share this out where you can. We would appreciate it. And I'm excited to continue sharing what we know with you and getting your feedback back to help us along too. So if you would like to watch this podcast, you're always invited to join the memberships over at Science Gal Aquatics on YouTube as low as 99 cents if you'd like to participate and kind of watch more of this podcast but we highly thank you very much appreciate you being here and you here can and check listening. out a bunch of videos over there too as well yes. we cover all kinds of filtration guppies mm -hmm. you name it mm -hmm. we have a video on it mm -hmm. but thank you so much for listening and tuning in we highly appreciate you and together we're gonna make this a great community it's even it's like the best hobby ever and i'm excited to just share what we can and together we can get the word out that don't believe <laughs> these myths a smaller tank is not easier no one inch of fish does not in one gallon of water does not work and your fish doesn't know when to stop growing just because you have a certain size tank. So, thank you again. And until next time. Next episode. Bye! <laughs>